Security experts have admitted that Russian government hackers have been able to penetrate the DNC's website. And of course, what did they do? They stole opposition research on Donald Trump. Now, this is the second time we're hearing about the DNC website being hacked into, uh, but the reports are saying that the Russian government hackers got into the computer network of the DNC. They gained access to the entire database of opposition research on Donald Trump. They also thoroughly compromised the system, uh, so they were able to read all emails and chat traffic. And now they say they, they weren't able to get in and get any information, of donor information, financial, personal, things like that. So this is where they suggest this is traditional espionage and not the work of criminal hackers, because, of course, they would have gone after that donor financial information. Uh, but this is just one of several political institutions that have been targeted, um, including Hillary Clinton's website, as well as Donald Trump, were also targeted. And they apparently had access to the DNC's website for about a year, and they were just expelled over the past weekend in a major computer cleanup campaign. This is according to committee officials. And of course, you were never warned about it, even though a lot of people continued to sign up, give them all their personal information. Uh, to the DNC. So this is a second time that they were breached. And they say, you know, this is just a, an example of how the Russian government wants to see the inner workings of the political system and understand the weaknesses, um, the strengths of future potential candidates, which, of course, is what America does as well. Um, but guess what? So the White House has come out today. The press secretary, Joss Ernest, has come out and blamed the GOP for the breach for a lack of funding. He said that Republicans, for the first time in 40 years, declined to even hold a hearing on that specific budget proposal, which means that the president has put forward a specific plan, laid out exactly how he believes we should pay for enhancing our nation's cybersecurity. But the Republicans in Senate, they didn't even want to talk about it. So, you know, that might be true about the president's plan going forward, but that doesn't explain the security breach as it happened and all of the past security breaches that they have experienced. So, you know, it's just like with this attack, they, a lot of people are saying that we need to support Muslims and, and want to look away at the fact that they actually hate gay people. So what do they do? They blame it on the Republicans and blame it on the religious right. So that's what this all is just kind of deflecting here once again. White House blames these security breaches on uh, the Republicans there. So speaking of hacking vulnerable servers, Russia is reportedly set to release Clinton's intercepted emails. Um, now, this is according to some intelligence sources. They say the Russian government could in the very near future release the text of email messages that were intercepted from uh, Hillary Clinton's private email server from the time she was U.S. Secretary of State. This would absolutely prove that Secretary Clinton had, in fact, laid open U.S. secrets to foreign interception by putting highly classified government reports on a private server. And Julian Assange of WikiLeaks has said that, indeed, if Wiki, WikiLeaks releases these emails, it will prove with enough evidence to indict her. So that will be incredibly interesting. Of course, you know, even with this criminal case, she still is running for president and could very well be our next president, scary as that sounds. Of course, one of the things that I'm sure were on her private server, one of those pesky emails that she hastily deleted, uh, was her foreign donations to the Clinton Foundation, and especially and specifically Saudi Foundation uh, funding. So the Saudis have actually funded 20% of Clinton's presidential campaign. This is according to the Saudi deputy crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. He was quoted as saying such. There was a video of him saying that, and it was very briefly reported uh, by the Jordanian Petra news agency, but it was deleted hastily. It was only up there for a very brief amount of time, but a, a snapshot of the original Arabic version was later republished by the Washington-based Institute for Gulf Affairs. Now, the video itself seemed innocent enough. The, the prince was actually talking about how uh, Saudi Arabia has always sponsored both the Republican and Democratic parties of America, and that the kingdom, he was very proud of it because they provided full enthusiasm, 20% of the cost of Hillary Clinton's campaign uh, in the US presidential elections. 
you know, this is despite the fact that other people don't support her because she's a woman. So they're playing this to show, wow, you know, Saudi Arabia is so great. We want this first lady president. Seems innocent enough. But it's actually quite damning because, as we know, it's illegal for foreign governments um, to fund U.S. presidential campaigns. Ah, but that's how the Clintons get around this thing. Now, let's not forget that in 2008, the Clinton Foundation disclosed that it had accepted up to $25 million from the Saudi kingdom in that same year, of course, the year she was running for president. So we will have more on how the Clinton campaign was funded by 9-11 uh, terrorists coming up in the next segment. Now, the president came out and responded to Donald Trump today saying, you know, this whole thing about trying to force me to say radical Islam, these are not magic words that someone can utter and then make terrorism go away. But apparently he thinks not saying those words is going to ma magically make terrorism go away. Uh, but he also came out and said, if we fall into the trap of painting all Muslims with a broad brush and imply that we are at war with an entire religion, then we are doing the terrorist work for them. But apparently he doesn't realize the irony in painting all gun owners with a very broad brush and denying Americans their rights. Isn't that doing the terrorist work for them? But indeed, this is actually what Rolling Stone is coming out and demanding. They want to repeal the Second Amendment, and they are doing that by promoting a constitutional expert who's advocating for the repeal of the Second Amendment. This is David Cohen, and he's saying, you know, sometimes we just have to acknowledge that the founders and the Constitution are wrong. We need to say loud and clear, the Second Amendment must be repealed. So Cohen says that he teaches the Constitution for a living, but if you actually look at this article, kind of comes under question if that's what he's really all about. He seems as, as much of a constitutional scholar as President Obama because it's more about looking at the Constitution and figuring out how you can misinterpret it. Uh, but one of the big things here, Kit Daniels points out in the article, I highly recommend you read this. It's very informative. Uh, but he goes on to say, I admire the founders for establishing a representative democracy that has survived for over two centuries. Well, a constitutional law professor should know more than anybody that the U.S. was founded as a republic. So that right there is kind of a ringer that this guy has no idea what he's talking about. And he, he, his purpose is to misinterpret the Constitution. But don't question him because he is an expert. And now we're finding out that the Orlando attackers ties to the American suicide bomber or go a little bit deeper uh, than was first suggested. Now, this is also according to a government source who told Fox News that Mateen's name surfaced twice for FBI investigators in the run-up to this attack um, after the first full FBI investigation of Mateen concluded in 2014. His name came up two months later in a second separate FBI investigation of American suicide bomber uh, Moner Abu Saha. He drove 16 tons of explosives into a Syrian government facility on behalf of al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front in late May of that year. The men had attended the same Eastern Florida mosque, but the FBI said, you know, that the association was very minimal, uh, but they claimed that Mateen was actually watching videos from the American cleric Anwar al Awalaki, who was an al-Qaeda terrorist uh, targeted for death by the CIA in 2011. And of course, reading Awalaki's sermons and watching his videos are among the most common and obvious red flags for homegrown terrorism. And of course, getting multiple visits by the FBI. Uh, if you're getting flagged multiple times to get investigated by the FBI, I think that right there is a red flag. But of course, once again, he was able to slip through the cracks. And now his current wife, who the media has largely overlooked in favor of his other wife, who said that he beat her and she was in an abusive relationship. Well, now they're looking at his current wife, who apparently had prior knowledge of his plans. Um, she actually drove him to the Pulse nightclub on prior occasions, and she was with him when he bought ammunitions and a holster. She says that she tried to talk him out of it, uh, tried to talk him out of any attacks. And now uh, officials are saying that she is cooperating with the investigation at this point, but it's a little too late for that kind of is taking away this whole lone wolf theory that they're trying to put out there because, of course, he did go to Saudi Arabia twice. So they're investigating that as well. Now, in Texas today, we had an armed Somalian man take 
uh, people hostage in a, in a Texas Walmart here, and they're going to probably label this as workplace violence because even though he had an Arabic note written in the car and they were asking for a Somalian interpreter so they could talk with him during this hostage crisis, um, and of course, Islam is the number one religion in Somalia, they're probably going to call this workplace violence because he was killed before he could express why exactly he was doing this. And talking about that Muslim ban on people coming in from terrorist hotbeds, Amarillo has the highest rate of refugees in the entire country. Is this, coupled with the French terror attack that took place today, why Hillary and Obama wished us all a happy Ramadan? When you look at that French situation, and, and whether or not these people are first or second generation, there's an article uh, that I'm going to talk about today via Drudge Report talking about more than half of the uh, deadly attacks in the last decade have been done by second generation. We're going to talk about why that is. There's a good reason for that. And when we talk about what's going on, I saw comments from people, hey, he wasn't an immigrant. And these guys who shot up Paris weren't immigrants either. That's part of the problem, though, is how they bring the people in. But you got Hillary Clinton coming in and saying gun control is the only way to stop terrorists from getting the tools they need. And it's like, no. You have to worry, if you're going to let terrorists into your country without any kind of vetting, without any kind of control, the least of your worries is going to be them getting some kind of a semi-automatic weapon. You, what you really need to be worried about is that they're going to come in and use nuclear, biological, or chemical. Those are the real weapons of war. And what we saw in France, we saw a jihadi coming in using the weapons of jihad. What was he using? He was using a knife and he was using Facebook. Now, do we need to ban knives? And do we need to ban Facebook? Are those the problems? He stabs the French officer in the, and this is a police commander. And this guy who committed this uh, terrorist act was under observation already. So even though the police have him under observation, and they always say that, they say, yeah, we knew about him. <laughs> I, I guess they don't want to pretend that they're ignorant. I guess it's better to say you're incompetent. Uh, but you need to know everything. <laughs> you just don't want to be uh, you, you know, I guess that's an excuse for being incompetent. But nevertheless, this guy was a known criminal. They said he was under observation, but he stabs the officer in the stomach, goes into the house, holds his wife hostage, eventually slits her throat in front of the three-year-old child. The two of them are bleeding out in front of the child, and this guy is filming it and putting it on Facebook and encouraging others to do the same. So let me ask you, is the problem a gun? Guns weren't involved there. Oh, yeah, the other word. I'm sorry. The guns were involved. At one point, the police showed up and they put an end to it, saving the life of the three-year-old by shooting this guy with a gun. That's where the guns come in. And you see, it's always when the people with guns get there, the good guys with the guns stop the bad guys with the knives, with the nuclear uh, weapons, with the biological weapons, with the chemical weapons, with their guns, whatever they choose to use. The issue is not gun control. The issue is border control. If you refuse to control the border, you will have these problems. As I pointed out, the people who have been responsible for over half of the deadly attacks in the past decade are second generation people like this shooter in Orlando. Why is that? Well, think about it. What are they being taught in school? They're being taught that the U.S. is bad. They're being taught by that by our federally controlled schools. They're being taught that uh, white privilege is bad, the founders are bad, uh, the principles this country was founded upon are bad. They've got their social justice committees that they're now setting up in schools, which sound like some kind of a uh, Marxist nightmare. But, of course, they don't want them to identify with America. They don't want them to join America. We used to talk about how America was the great melting pot. Everybody brings something into the country, and we all mix it together, and we get something that didn't exist before anywhere else, some unique blend of all these backgrounds and cultures. They don't want that. They don't want the melting pot. They want the tossed salad. They want people to remain distinct, because if they remain distinct and separate from each other in their own little enclaves, or in the case of the Muslims, and their own self-set-up and self-maintained uh, ghettos because they don't want to mix with the outside people. And that happens in many cases. They encourage them not to learn the language. They want us to pay for their education in a different language other than English. So they don't even want them to have a common language with us. What was the Tower of Babel about? Oh, you separate people by language and they can't work together.
they won't work together. It'll be the foundation of confusion and conflict. And that is what our government is engineering with these people who come in. That's why the second generation is worse than the first. They have no concept of the places that they came from, that even though their parents may not like, they may not feel comfortable in this culture, they know that what they came from was worse than what they have here. But the kids don't know that. And the kids don't want to be identified as American because that's got too many connotations of, you know, being connected to these uh, white males and stuff. So let, let's, let's come up with a separate identity. And that's when you get these La Raza judges that are coming against Trump. That's when you get this shooter in Orlando. Okay. These people come in like this judge. Heavily pushing La Raza, push everything for the race. For people outside of the race, nothing. And he comes against Trump. It was about La Raza, just like it's about Islam for this guy. This guy mocked his classmates and celebrated at 9-11. He said, this is what America deserves. And then he shoots 50 people because a second generation hates us the most. A lot of people ask me, what is the most important area of InfoWars that runs the whole operation that is having such a big effect against the globalists? And I've said it over and over again, it is you, the listeners and the viewers, that send us the intel, the news tips, that support the broadcast, that spread the word. You are 90% of the operation or more. You don't stand beside us, you stand at the heart of InfoWars. When I talk about the people at InfoWars, from customer service, the shipping department, being just as important as our anchors, our researchers, our investigative journalists, and myself, it's absolutely true. Without this team that we've built over the last 20 plus years, we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've been doing. And that's what's so exciting because we finally built up to a point where we now have the launch pad Introducing AutoShip for InfoWarsLife.com, a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWarsStore.com products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when products are sold out, you're unable to get them, sometimes for months, but we hold back the products for people that have already signed up for AutoShip. When you choose AutoShip before checkout on your order at InfoWarsStore.com, we'll give you 10% off and give you guaranteed delivery of out-of-stock products that are on your AutoShip list. Plus, we're giving you free shipping on all orders above $50. Listeners have been requesting this for years because it's so easy to forget to reorder the products when you need them each month. Now it's finally here. Auto ship at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. It's easy. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, select your favorite product, click on the auto ship, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. As you know, I coined the term 360 win. And with the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com, it's a sure win. You add to that free shipping on orders of $50, it is a can't lose. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and save 10% off on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting Auto Ship at checkout and get free shipping on all orders above $50. That's InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139.